Today is May 12th, and this is COVID-19 Local Impact Ottawa Valley. I'm Trevor Riley. Here's a look at the COVID-19 situation. At the latest update, we had no new confirmed cases, which keeps us at 18, one death, and 12 resolved cases. Total tests done in the county now sit at 2,267, and negative tests are reached have now reached 2,078, and we are currently awaiting the results of 171 tests. As we turn the page to the province of Ontario, the numbers of cases went up by 361, bringing it up to 20,907. 1,725 deaths have been reported, and total tests increased yesterday by over 11,000 tests. Now, the total has reached 458,000 tests. Those are the current numbers for the 10.30 a.m. update on May 12th. Today, Stacy, owner of the Sugar Society, will be discussing how during the COVID-19 lockdown, services are at a complete standstill. However, online retail through sugarsociety.ca are still available. Stacy talks about the challenges and what she's been taking advantage of during this time. Yeah, so we, we did it a little preemptively, like a few days before. I do feel because we're in such close contact with people, that was the best move that we personally could do. Um, and I was seeing kind of other places across Ontario do so. Um, we're at a complete standstill as far as services go. We were doing some retail, we still are, but it's it's definitely changed the business. Like it's it's very interesting to, I have, a, I have to try to structure my day, focus on retail, I'm just kind of doing the best I can and staying true to our viewers and our audience because I also didn't feel like people didn't see us as just a retail store. So the change has affected us where I didn't want to just be on there selling, selling, selling now. I still wanted to provide our clients with like the same kind of education, the same content that they had before. So it's been challenging, but I feel like the end is near and we'll make it through. And yeah, you learn a lot from it. Like you can... I know that if something like this were to happen again, we'd probably be a lot more prepared and be able to handle things differently. I don't think anybody was prepared, really. Um, <laughs> you, can't, you can't plan for this. And, th and that's what I'm saying. Like, I think one of the biggest things that I've seen in other areas is kind of people being really hard on small businesses saying, like, how do you not have two months rent? How do you not have this? How do you not have that? And it's like, for me, there's so much as a small business owner that goes you can be very smart and you can be good with your money, but when are you used to almost like a complete shutdown, complete shutdown of uh -huh. really any of your services, any of your business? So uh, my heart goes out to a lot of people. I think that there's a lot of people that are worse off than we are. And I'm thankful that we have had such good support, but you just got to learn from it and grow stronger and stay positive. That's the other thing too. It's very, very easy to kind of get caught up because we're at home all day, all night. Like everything's kind of changed for everyone. So it's like, if I find myself getting into a bit of a negative cycle, it's like, okay, the end is near. Like, let's talk about services. Let's look at different products. Let's do something to focus on the good because this will end soon enough. I have to do a lot of um, just courses, um, free and paid, like, through Digital Main Street, I got a grant last year. So that was one that I've been finishing up. I've been able to focus. Some of that would have been harder if this hadn't happened. Um, I've offered my makeup lessons online, Zoom. When I do my makeup lessons in person, I have the client walk through it anyways. So I was able to do that for people where they would still be putting in the work and we could do it like this and we can have that face to face. Um, and I've been able to connect with business owners that I may not have talked to before, just like kind of like a, Hey, how are you doing? Or like, sometimes I'll see posts where you can tell, like, I, I just know that someone's struggling. I'm an extrovert. So this is really, really mm -hmm. challenging to be stuck in. And I think even for some, some of those people that are introverts, that's their only, when they have those connections, like that's, the, that's their moment to like, I don't know. I think it's just, it's been challenging, but yeah, I just get up and I've been doing a lot of those courses and just trying to do online learning. There's a lot of options out there. And I feel like a lot of companies have stepped up to either offer discounts or offer free education and just really taking advantage of like everything that's available to us right now, you know? So drop-offs and gift certificates. Okay. Um, so I'll deliver in area and then I can deliver outside of the area. I've had a few um, orders from people from Winnipeg. So oh, wow. 
yeah, so I do that. And then the retail that we carry, I'm really passionate about the products we carry. So right now, I would say about 80% of the products we carry are Canadian. They're natural. They're organic. I've looked for brands right. across the country that I've used before uh, or bonded with the owners or really like the product. And I did put it out to our audience about a week and a half ago, just thinking, you know, I, my sister's American, so it's nothing against the U.S., but I feel like as far as like supply chains go and getting the product here, that's oh. another challenge during this time. So I'm going to try to put that number more to like 95% of Canadian, even when it goes to like the supplies that we use. I really, I think it, even if there's a higher cost, eventually it will balance out and be worth it. So. Welcome back to the program. Yesterday we heard from Dr. Mark Cameron, a Canadian doctor working on research in the United States about the comparisons between working during SARS and now during COVID-19. Today, Your TV Muskoka's James Bowler talks to Dr. Cameron about how soon we could see a vaccine being distributed to the general public and also how a manipulation of the virus could affect the rollout of that vaccine. So, Mark, let's talk about a vaccine. So, uh, you know, original projections around March were 18 months. Uh, your own president, Donald Trump, has asked for a, a warp speed vaccine, um, which, you know, I understand was about a year now. So tell me, you know, what are the projections now? How soon could we see a vaccine hit the general public? So warp speed vaccine development has actually uh, occurred uh, right now, although those are the first few phases. Because of our experience with SARS in 2003 um, and H1N1 swine flu 10 years ago, and also um, MERS, Middle East um, Respiratory S Syndrome, another coronavirus uh, from a, a number of years ago, um, the vaccine development phase hit the ground running. So warp speed was quite um, appropriate for the phase we're in right now. Right now, there are hundreds of vaccine candidates worldwide that will move to various stages of testing. In the uh, U.S., there are eight vaccines already in clinical trials. Now, that is the first phase of um, rolling out a vaccine, where they are giving the vaccine to small groups of healthy individuals. That's just phase one. And what they're looking at in phase one is the safety of the vaccine in general and whether a immune response to COVID-19 is adequately generated. The next phases, phase two and phase three, is bringing the vaccine out to uh, larger and larger groups of people as a clinical trial. Um, phase three is the largest, with, where thousands of individuals are vaccinated, including the people that will need the vaccine the most, i.e. with COVID-19, uh, the elderly. Um, and then looking at that stage further at safety, making sure there aren't uh, any adverse events that occur in the vaccinees. And then the efficacy, is this vaccine or this particular vaccine, because there will probably be several candidates, effective at protecting the population when they're exposed? The second and third stages of that clinical trial process to get to a vaccine that can be selected and rolled out to the general public takes a long time. What uh, I hope for is if we're talking in a year now that the vaccines that kind of rose to the top during the development as the safest and most effective are at that stage three clinical trial. And then what has to happen then is if it's effective, if it's safe, it has to be manufactured and rolled out as a vaccine to the general population. Now that is a relatively short amount of time over the next year, year and a half to actually do that. Everything would have to fall in place. The vaccine would have to be very effective in all of the people that are treated. What I'm hoping for, and I think it's a reasonable expectation is that the SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID-19 vaccine is available for the 2021 uh, autumn 
start of the cold and flu season. And I think that is a reasonable uh, goal. But warp speed really is a term that right now is describing the science the world over to identify a number of different vaccine candidates that can be pushed forward in parallel, which is going to be a very costly process, uh, to um, pick and choose the most effective way of vaccinating people. Mark, my last question for you is about mutations and reinfection. Now, um, there's been some discussion that, uh, and some reports that this is not happening, it could be happening. Um, I'm curious, what is the, the realism of, of a mutation happening? How long would that take? And how does that affect with, uh, how does that play against the vaccine process? Right, so every virus has a family tree uh, and the COVID-19 virus is no different. As it emerged from Southeast Asia and spread around the world, um, scientists have been sequencing it and watching for mutations. Uh, and they've identified small little changes as it has spread around the world. So the uh, SARS-CoV-2 that you might find in Toronto uh, or Cleveland here may be slightly different from the virus as it emerged in Wuhan, China, or um, affected uh, Italy. Now, so far, um, the virus has been quite stable. And coronaviruses typically are, unlike influenza viruses, which change on us almost every year. And continue to stay with us as we bring you more information as this develops. I'm Trevor Riley. Thanks for watching.